Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Backboard. Okay, we're back. We're live for the four o'clock block. I'm Jay Fidel on a given Monday. <clears throat> and I want to say that this is Education Matters because education does matter. It matters in Hawaii. You know, in many ways, we, we haven't um, kept up with educational trends in the country, educational requirements for, for citizens. Um, and we need to do that here. We need to make a workforce that, that creates entrepreneurial activity, um, that builds a better economy, especially an innovation economy. And if you look around, and you, you do look around, you'll see that um, we are not as well educated as we should be. And so we have a student today, a student, a kind of, I don't know if I should call you an activist student. Maybe you are an activist. Yeah. Okay, she agreed. <laughs> so Tara Johnson Kidd. And she is a student uh, um, doing very well at HPU. Um, and we have her to talk about her own educational experience and her views of education in the state. Welcome to the show, Thank Satara. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Yeah. So tell us about your own background. Are you from Hawaii? Where is your training before Hawaii? Um, what are you doing now to get educated? Um, well, I'm originally not from Hawaii. I'm actually a military brat, so I spent most of my life overseas in Japan. But when I was around the age of 15 years old, I moved to the D.C. area. I moved to Reston, and that's where I went to high school at. So I went to an amazing high school. Um, it was a public school, but it was um, very diverse. It was in a wonderful neighborhood. And um, yeah, my education there was amazing. After I graduated from high school, I came here to HPU to mm -hmm. continue my education. And mm -hmm. I'm getting my bachelor degree, my bachelor's degree in international business, and I'm also minoring in Spanish. Okay, let me unpack some of that. Mm -hmm. You had a great high school education. What yes. high school was it? South Lakes High School, rest of Virginia. Public high school, private high school? Uh, public. Hmm. What was great about it? The education was absolutely amazing. Virginia actually has amazing public schools. I had amazing teachers. Somebody who was actually near and dear to my heart was um, my counselor. She wasn't my teacher, obviously, but um, anything that I needed, any classes I needed help with, she always made sure she had the resources that I needed in order to be successful. And every teacher that was at that school, you could tell that they wanted to be there and they cared about the students and they wanted to see them succeed. Mm -hmm. So that's really what made my education amazing and what made me love my high school. It's great to hear you say that. You know, mm -hmm. not everybody says that about yeah. their high school experience. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so here you are and you come, you know, you have your, you're fresh out of uh, high school, I guess, mm -hmm. and you come to HPU. Why HPU? Well, um, to be honest, I just really wanted to get as far away as possible and why not go to Hawaii? So um, it was just more so why not. I was young at the time. I was 18. Um, I really had no reason to stay in the D.C. area. I had never been to Hawaii before. I hate the cold, so this was perfect for me. And then also HPU, the international business program, is phenomenal. And that's I always knew that's what I wanted to go to college for. So it was like the perfect thing for me to actually go to HPU. And why the international relations uh, program? Why did that appeal to you? Um, international business. So... Um, I always loved business. Um, I actually just always had a love for it. Everything that had to do with business, I took Ivy business classes when I was a junior in high school. So um, I always knew I wanted to go to school for business and just living overseas and traveling different states. I just, um, I just, I wanted to travel. So I just thought international business was the perfect major for me. Mm. Yeah. So your time in Japan really led up to your interest in Definitely. international business. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Is there any particular kind of business that appeals to you? I mean, when you think about international business, what kind of business are you thinking about? Um, more so um, education business in different countries. So my overall dream scheme and uh, just the, the overall plan of my life is I really want to work for the World Bank Group. And I want to go to different countries and help kids uh, be able to get the education they need and have the access to education better their lives. Because my parents always told me that education is the only ticket out of poverty. And I truly wholeheartedly believe that. So I want to make sure that other children and other people in different countries have the opportunity to go to school. Mm. That's noble. <laughs> Thank good, you. Good for you. Thank How you. well did you do in high school? Um, I don't remember exactly. It was like three years ago, but um, I was an average student. I know I wasn't like a straight A student, but I was average. I got A's and B's. Um, the only class I remember I did terrible in was uh, Algebra 2. That's the only class I could just distinctly remember doing really bad in. But for the most part, I, 
I was an average student. I participated in a lot of extracurricular activities. Um, I worked. It was just I was just an average student, I would say. What kind of extracurricular activities? Because we're going to talk about some more of your yeah. current extracurricular activities. Mm -hmm. What did you do in high school? Um, I was a part of FBLA. So that was actually the only business program I was ever a part of. And then also um, something that a lot of people don't know about me is I used to be a Tahitian dancer. I've been dancing ever since I was like 10. So um, when I was 16 um, and I was living in the D.C. area at the time, they don't have any like Tahitian dance classes there whatsoever. So I decided to like start my own business and um, I started teaching dance classes all around the area and it's actually very successful. I taught like in Baltimore, taught in D.C., I taught in Northern Virginia. So um, that's actually what I was like focused on, and that was more so what my extracurricular like activities mm. were. Do you have a, you think you have a penchant for teaching? Yes and no. Um, I don't see myself being like an elementary school teacher or a middle school teacher, but um, I do see myself like you know giving certain classes. Like I like I like sharing my experiences and I like helping people. Um, I don't really see teaching, but just more of I guess like type of consulting work is what I see myself doing, but not like. You know a teacher in the classroom okay okay yeah all right now here we are in HPU mm -hmm. three years ago you're a junior now yeah mm -hmm. <clears throat> so how has it been what have you done so HPU has been amazing my first semester was one of the hardest um, I was just going through a lot of hard times um, I was young like I said I was 18 I just I wasn't used to being so far from my parents it was just hard adjusting going to school so my first semester actually was a really um, hard semester for me at HPU and I didn't do that well but um, after that, I started doing really, really well, and HPU has been amazing. Um, a lot of the classes are very challenging, but HPU is really good with providing resources in order for the students to be successful. Mm. So the staff here, I can't stress that enough. They're absolutely amazing. I can tell that HPU really takes time and like to consider who they hire. So the staff has helped me so much. And um, since I want to say my freshman year, it's been an amazing journey being a student here. Mm. So yeah. what are your favorite, what have your favorite classes and teachers been in HPU over the past couple, three years? Um, so my favorite teacher and my favorite class, um, top of the board, um, top of everything, um, I would have to say Dr. Fawn. She's a political science teacher. She is absolutely amazing just because I could tell that she wants to be, te like, she wants to work here. She's very passionate about what she does. So um, in political science, she talked about problems and she focused on problems that were current day and things that the students were interested in. And she always had open discussions to hear our point of view. So she's been an amazing teacher. I love her. I wish I could take more classes by her. I don't actually think I have enough time on my schedule, but <laughs> she's been, honestly, I can't stress her enough. And my academic advisor, Miss um, Caveo, she's like amazing. Like, I got actually, I actually got switched three times with my academic advisor. When I first got here, I had one academic advisor, then she moved, then I had a second one, then she moved, and now I have her, and she's been my academic advisor for years now. And like, during the summer, she's calling me, Satara, like, how are you doing? She's emailing. During the summer, eh? That's mm -hmm. completely she's voluntary, isn't amazing. it? Yeah, oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> she's absolutely amazing. Like, I can't stress that enough. Even if I just want to talk because something went wrong, she's there for me. Yeah. So she's just, yeah. She's not a teacher, but yeah, okay. she's been a teacher. Anybody else you want to mention? Any other, <clears throat> any other course you want to mention? Um, no, not at the top of my head. Okay. <laughs> not the <clears throat> what about Spanish? Mm -hmm. I actually haven't taken any classes yet here at HBO. I'm doing an online class through my community college back home, but um, I'm not taking like any like classes here at HPU yet. So I'll actually be studying abroad next year in Peru, and I'll be um, going. Peru, did you say? Yes, Peru, Lima, Peru. I'll be taking classes in the country there at a partner school. That's your senior year. Yes. Next year, mm -hmm. so you'll be spending your senior year abroad. Uh, abroad. This mm -hmm. is a regular program that you can do that people yes, do. Yes, exactly. So HPU mm -hmm. has uh, a lot of study abroad programs to choose from. There's like only there's um, over seventy countries, I believe, that you can choose from. This past summer, I actually went to Morocco to um, teach English. So. Um, with HPU, actually, I went through one of their programs. So, yeah, I will be going to Peru with a partner school at HPU. Well, that's Spanish. great. That's great. Yeah. <clears throat> so, what about scholarships? What, what do you grade? What do you? What's your grade point at uh, HPU? I, I need to know so I can match that against, mm -hmm. um, you know, your zeal <laughs> on education. <laughs> so my GPA is around a three point two, three point two five, three point three. Right now, I'm focused on trying to raise my GPA. So, like I said, that first semester I was here. Oh God, it was it was just completely terrible. You know, it's completely my fault. I can't blame the school, but I was just like, I, school wasn't my first priority at the time. So right now, I'm just focused on trying to raise my GPA. 
But um, honestly, with HPU, when it comes to studying abroad programs, when it comes to scholarships, you really want to make sure your GPA, at the very least, is a 3.0. Mm. So, yeah. So you're on a scholarship? Slight one, yeah. <laughs> Light one, okay. <laughs> yeah, right. I can't go into details about it, but I'm on a slight one with HPU. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So you're going to graduate, what, uh, a year from this coming May, June? Yeah, so I'm actually focused on trying to graduate earlier. Um, which will be the winter of 2019. So if everything just works out perfectly, I'll be graduating around that time. But um, if not, then I'm just spring 2020. That's what I'm looking at graduating, but basically like yes, a year from now. You like the HPU campus, the downtown experience? No, not that. <laughs> it would be one of what do you want, like, green grass? Is that what? Yeah, I actually want an actual college campus. You know, and I don't want to uh, talk negatively about my school because I'm really proud to be an HPU shark. But um, I do not like the campus. I've had a lot of problems um, just, you know, walking here by myself. Um, so the, I, I do think HPU has a lot to improve when it comes to our actual downtown campus, when mm -hmm. it comes to safety and making sure kids actually feel like they're actually at a college campus rather than just going to random buildings and classrooms mm -hmm. but um it is what it is you know yeah, hp yeah. is working on it i know we'll be getting a new campus because they're moved from the lowest side yeah, it changes so, in, the, yeah. in, in the making yeah mm -hmm. so um you know uh what you you told me before the show began that you you have no problem in school that mm -hmm. you're a good student yeah that you can maintain a high grade point mm -hmm. average without really working that hard am i right mm-hmm mm, that sounds about right yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay with all of that you have spare time yeah. And you have some really interesting extracurricular activities. Yes, I do. May I mm -hmm. say activists extra can you tell you can, can you tell that. us about yeah, that? Yeah, you could say that. Okay. So I do have two organizations that I started with HPU. So um, the first organi organization is called the Young Minorities Professionals Association. So what it does is it focuses on trying to get um, not only minority students, but just raise the um, graduation rate at HPU um, altogether. And we also hold classes on racism and stereotyping if it was to happen to you in the workplace and how to deal with it correctly and appropriately. And we also provide resources to students um, if they were to need it. And then my second organization that I have is called Future Business Leaders of Hawaii. So I started with um, the Entrepreneurship Club. I'm a part of that. It's an amazing club, by the way. And what they did is they're like, we each get like our own um, projects that we have to come up with. And so for mine, education, you know, if you can't tell, I love education. So. I decided to start this program to help um, the youth in Hawaii, specifically juniors and seniors at public high schools here. I'm going to go there and teach business and marketing classes and also talk about my experience as a college student in hopes to get um, high school students to go to college. And both of these organizations you founded, no? Yes, I started them myself. <clears throat> did you found them alone or did you find them, found them with, with groups of others? So the Young Minority Professional Association, I started it on my own. Um, I originally got the idea um, from talking actually with my um, uh, Dr. Fawn. She's uh, the political science teacher I mentioned earlier. So she told me um, just about like the statistics of the school and um, or of school in general. And actually, uh, minority students at college are sometimes more likely to drop out of school just because, like, even if they have their tuition paid for, just mm -hmm. because a lot of times you don't have that sense of belonging. And at HPU, it's a very diverse school, but um, we don't have that many like black uh, black students in general. So at first, I was going to do like a black student union, and I was like, no, I don't want to do that. I want to include everybody. So who's a minority for purposes of this organization? The minorities. Um, well, the organization is for all minor. Not I don't want to say all minorities. The organization is for all students in general. I'm not going to single oh because you're this, you can't come. I would never do that. It's for all students in general. But it originally started because minority students at HPU. Um, Unfortunately, um, if you're not white or Asian, the chance of you graduating is very low, and I'm trying to boost that and get us to graduate from the school. Mm, mm, so, yeah. Okay, so, and, and the uh, future business leaders of Hawaii, that, that's mm -hmm. the one that gets you out, huh? Yeah. And you're so, out into the neighborhoods. <laughs> yeah. Yes, so, um, yes, that's the one I'm actually going to be going to public schools, um, public high schools in Hawaii, and I'll be going to talk to seniors and juniors at the high school to uh, get them to like, you know, go to college and also teach business and marketing classes just to get them involved and to see what it's like to continue your education after high school. How time consuming is it to run two nonprofit very quote activist organizations like um, this? It's, it's very time consuming, very, very time consuming. But um, to be honest, it, it, both of these programs and both these organizations, it's very, very, very close to my heart. 
because um, I didn't have a hard life growing up whatsoever. Like, you know, I, I you, you didn't do this in high school. Oh, no, no. This I is all know. happening right here oh, at yeah, HBU definitely. right now. Yeah. yeah, exactly. But again, like, it, it is very time consuming, but um, it's close to my heart. Like, you know, like I said, I didn't have a hard life growing up. I came from a two parent household. Both my parents went to college. My father is an engineer, my mom is um, a social worker. So I come from a very good life, a very good background. I never but... met a social worker I didn't like. <laughs> good. If you met my mom, you would love her. But um, my parents, unfortunately, they didn't have like really good lives. My mom, she grew up in a very bad part of Atlanta. My dad is from Baltimore. They both had really, really terrible lives growing up. They both grew, um, grew up in the time with the crack epidemic and just a whole bunch of things happening. So they would always tell me like, oh, because we went to college and we got our education, like this is the reason why we're able to, prov to provide this for you. And even though I didn't have a hard life, when I see other students who, you know, they might not be going through the same thing as my parents are going through, but it might be harder for them just to go to school and to continue their education, or they might not know, or they might be scared. I want to help them because in the long run, you know, nobody can take your education away from you. You're always going to have it. It's, it's always going to be there. So it's just, it's very close to my heart, and I just, I really want to see not just minority students, but all students in general, I really want to see us succeed. Ah. I love this conversation. Don't you love this conversation? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so Tara Johnson, kid, we're talking about education. We're talking about her experience. And we're going to talk about the kinds of things that she does and thinks and consults about right here in Hawaii, mm -hmm. right after this break. This is going to be great. You'll see. We'll be right back. Hello. My name is Stephanie Mock, and I'm one of three hosts of Think Tech Hawaii's Hawaii Food and Farmer series. Our other hosts are Matt Johnson and Pumai Weigert, and we talk to those who are in the fields and behind the scenes of our local food system. We talk to farmers, chefs, restaurateurs, and more to learn more about what goes into sustainable agriculture here in Hawaii. We are on at Thursdays at 4 p.m., and we hope we'll see you next time. If you're not in control of how you see yourself, then who is? Live above the influence. Hi, I'm Ethan Allen, host on Think Tech Hawaii of Pacific Partnerships in Education. Every other Tuesday afternoon at 3 p.m., I hope you'll join us as we explore the value, the accomplishments, and the challenges of education here in the Pacific Islands. <music> Okay, we're back. Mm -hmm. We're live with Satari Johnson Kidd. We're talking about education. She's a junior at uh, HPU, and she came from a family where her parents had hard times, mm -hmm. um, and they told her education was really important, and she's incorporated that into her worldview, mm -hmm. and she's playing that out in not one yeah. but two educational helping programs mm -hmm. here at HPU. And we are very impressed with that. Thank you. I appreciate it. So um, I want to talk about, um, you know, your conclusions, mm -hmm. your public policy conclusions about education um, in Hawaii mm -hmm. and education, I suppose, uh, uh, as part of the economy, as part of the life experience. Mm -hmm. So you told me before the, the show began that you were concerned that a lot of students, uh, a lot of would-be students, <laughs> never went to college here. Mm -hmm. And uh, that concerned you. Tell me what you've learned about it and uh, what the factors are to keep kids out of college here. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to say a lot of students are just like, you know, they're just not going to school. But if you look at the statistics as a whole, um, unfortunately, Hawaii doesn't have a really big college graduation rate. So um, that's, you know, I don't want to say that's alarming to me, but it's like I feel like students should be able to go to college. You think everybody should go to college? Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely. If you have the means to, Actually, let me rephrase that. If, if college is something you truly want to do, then I believe you should go. Like, if you have a dream of becoming a doctor or a lawyer, of course, you're going to have no choice but to go to school. So I believe that you should go. But I don't think somebody should use, like, the excuse, like, oh, my parents didn't go to school, so I shouldn't go, or, like, mm. I'm not smart enough, because I do believe that everybody has mm. the ability and is capable to go. So with um, Hawaii, unfortunately, like I said before, they don't really have a huge college graduation rate, so I really want to change that with the students. Um, I'm not from here specifically, but I have a lot of family that lives here, and they tell me that um, the high schools here don't have the best education system, unfortunately. Like I said, um, I'm just an outsider speaking in. I never went to high school here, so I, I don't know what it's like to go to a school here, but from what people have told me, it isn't the best education system. 
So when the education system is not good, it's harder for kids to go to school. So I just want to be that person who can like help them to teach them, like, hey, you know, you might not have came from the best situation, but you can still continue your education if you want to. Yeah, really important. Um, and you know, let me add that some people say, and and I think it's probably true. There's this sort of uh, local anti-intellectual anti strain, mm -hmm. where people think, oh, that's I don't need that. I don't want to. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be a smart guy. Um, I'd rather do, you know, work that doesn't require college, mm -hmm. and a lot of them do. Uh, and it works for them. Mm -hmm. um, so the question, the larger sense, is you say, let's dwell on this, you say that everybody mm -hmm. should go to college. There are people out there uh, that don't agree with you. They think mm -hmm. that not everybody should go to college. Why do you feel everybody should go to college? Well, for those people, that's great, and they're entitled to their opinion. Um, I don't want to shun those people and say that they're wrong. Everybody has their own values and their own opinions with, when it comes to certain things. But um, I, like I said before, you know, if you want to go to school, you have some type of desire, but you're scared to go to school because you're like, okay, like, you know, my parents didn't go or I feel like I didn't receive the best education, you shouldn't let that be the thing that's going to hold you back. I believe that everybody should go to college because I feel like everybody is capable. You know, even if you come from... Like, even let's just say you, like, you know, you have some type of mental disorder and you're, like, you're not able to, like, completely grab the college, like, work. Um, personally, like, I have friends who do have disabilities and they still went to school. So I think that everybody should just, you know, they should strive to be the best person they can be. And if you, sh if you really want to go, you just shouldn't let anything be an excuse. You should still try and pursue your education. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, um, yeah, so one of the things uh, that strikes me is that um, college takes you into areas of theoretical knowledge, mm -hmm. uh, literature, poetry, mm -hmm. uh, logic. Um, I, I, I can't name all the courses, but um, are those courses really necessary? Uh, or should I just uh, study things that will get me a job? I think it all depends on the person. Some people are like, you know, I only want to study things that are going to give me the job. Some people are like, no, I want to study everything. Um, when it comes to me specifically, um, like I said, I'm a business student. Um, my major is international business. So when it comes to me, I prefer to actually don't only study stuff that I'm going to use within my career field. But there are those people that are like different, like, no, I want to learn everything. I want to learn, you know, about poetry. I want to learn about different philosophies. I want to learn about different times in history. It's up to, your, you know, that person and what they want to do. Mm -hmm. You know, and here we have private schools. Mm -hmm. uh, in some ways, they dominate uh, the group of, you know, the organization of private schools is I think it's H I A S, mm -hmm. H A I S, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, they they're very important, yes. and if you have the bucks, you like to go there. Mm -hmm. um, and they're different than the public schools. Mm -hmm. Now I, I know that there, where you went to school in Virginia, right? There mm -hmm. were a lot of private schools in right? my area. Not that I, I'm sure there were. Not to my knowledge, I can't think of any off the top of my head. Um, but I'm sure there probably were a lot of private schools around me. Yeah. It just didn't take, the, take out the time really to look because I went to public school. Yeah. So, so now that you're here, you mm -hmm. see, you, I'm sure you've seen, and you're going around consulting and talking and meeting people and all that mm -hmm. in education, you've seen the difference between the public and the private schools. Yes. Uh, what do you think of that? What do you think of that system? Is that a good system? Do you endorse that? Um, yes and no. Um, because usually if you're paying money for school, you know, and it's not college, um, I'd like to think about paying around ten to $15,000 a year for my child to go to the 10th grade, that the education should be phenomenal because that's money out of my pocket. So I do endorse it. But then again, there always, there's always going to be those students who can't afford to go to a private school. And it's unfair to them because it's not, it's not their fault that they can't afford it and they should still have the access to a great education. Like me, I didn't go to a private school. I went to a public school and I went to an amazing school. My parents, they couldn't afford to send me to some private school that cost like 15000 a year. So I do think, you know, yes and no. Like if, you're, if I'm paying a lot of money to send my child to school, I should make sure that they're getting their money's worth and they're getting a great education. But if you can't afford to send your child to a private school, they should still have access to an amazing, an, an amazing education in a public school. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So um, the question then, this is the big question mm -hmm. for the discussion today with you, mm -hmm. is uh, what's the relationship? of having a good education in both high school and college uh, with not necessarily the quality of your life and, uh, you know, the scope of your income over your lifetime, but, but, the, but the economy of the state, mm -hmm. um, the community, if you will. Mm -hmm. What's the relationship? Have you, thought, have you thought about that? 
I actually haven't thought about it, but if I could just give you like the best um, answer, I guess, that I'm thinking of now. Um, like my parents said, education is the only way out of poverty. It's the, nobody can ever take your education away from you. When you're educated, you're not gonna make the same mistake twice. You're gonna know how to do things. You're gonna learn from your mistakes. And not necessarily education as much as um, going to college, getting a degree, but just, you know, just even just learning from your mistake, you know, making, um, learning from your mistakes and making wise decisions. When you're educated, you're, you're gonna know right from wrong. You're gonna know what, uh, what to do and what not to do, and you're gonna learn how to move forward from the past. And that's just, you know, just the whole, the whole ideal when it comes to education in general. You should always be constantly trying to educate yourself. You should never be like, okay, I graduated from high school and I'm done. You should always be trying to get more knowledge and gain more knowledge. Mm, go to so, more yeah. school. Yes, definitely. You know, I mean, I, you know, a lot of people, they stop. Mm -hmm. they, they see, well, I guess the degree, I'm all mm -hmm. finished. Yeah. I don't think you're going to do that. Not you're going to get the degree, there'll be more. Definitely. Do con you contemplate a graduate degree in I do. international I business? Have, I don't have a choice. My dream, <laughs> my, uh, dream company is the World Bank Group. Um, I don't have much of a choice. Uh, to work at the World Bank Group, I usually at the very least you need a master's degree, um, mm -hmm. depending on the job. But for the job that I want, you need a master's degree. So, yeah, I'm going straight into graduate okay, school. Okay, more work for you. Yeah. On, on the other hand, uh, you know, you're probably not going to take that additional degree here. Mm -hmm. You're probably not going to be working for the World Bank Group here. Yeah. It isn't here, actually. It's not here. And so what, what we are doing, we are, we are preparing you. We're giving you, let's say, a great education. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I think you might be getting a great education. I'm getting an amazing education. Okay. So then you leave. Mm -hmm. So what is the relationship of that, you know, the brain drain on our economy and our community here in Hawaii? That's um, something I actually thought about because um, not even when I graduate, I'm going to be leaving after this semester because I'm going to a whole different country. I definitely, with the organizations that I started, I would like to leave it with somebody. Um, I do have a treasurer. Um, her name is Kate. She is the treasurer of my organization. She does um, sort of co-help me run it. So, you know, if I could leave the organization with her, that would be great. If not, that's also In the organizations you're working with? Yes, for the um, the Young Minorities Professional Association, she's the uh, treasurer. Okay, great. The um, other one, I actually don't have another person to lead it to yet. But you're looking. Yeah, but I am looking. <laughs> but um, I definitely don't want it to be like, okay, once I leave, that's it. These organizations aren't here. I'm not going to help anybody. I want to leave it to somebody so we can continue it. And not even leaving, if my organizations, unfortunately, don't um, aren't here next semester, you know, that's unfortunate, but, you know, sometimes that's just the way life is. The fact that if I was, um, if, like, you know, when I go to the high schools and if I was able to talk to a student, I was able to encourage them, you know what, I had a, somebody came here and they talked to me, and because of her, I'm going to continue, continue my education, whether that be trade school, whether that be going to, like, certain classes, whether that be college, I'm going to continue my education. That means a lot to me. The mm -hmm. fact that I helped that one person, even though my organization might not be here, that one person can help the sure, next person. Sure, it's your contribution, your exactly. legacy to the community. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. let's go one step further, Sarah, mm -hmm. one, one step further. And that is, you're out there. Mm -hmm. You have your advanced degree, master's, mm -hmm. maybe PhD, who mm -hmm. knows, whatever the World Bank Group <laughs> wants you to have. Yeah. After all, it is your dream company. Yeah. Uh, and you're, you know, out there anywhere in the world, who knows mm -hmm. where you might be. Mm -hmm. What are the chances? that you'll come back. Um, will you be focusing on that? Or, or when you leave, is that going to be it for Hawaii? Um, I don't know. It just depends on where life takes me. If you would have asked me when I was 14 where I was going to college, I would have never said Hawaii, and then look, I'm here now. So it just depends on where life takes me. You know, I could leave and never come back. I could leave and come back two months, in two months, you know, that I left. So it just depends on where life takes me. I'm completely fine with coming back here if that's just where my life takes me, if that's where the World Bank Group takes me. I'm completely Wouldn't that fine. be something, huh? It would definitely be something. They would not be making a mistake because Hawaii no, they needs wouldn't. me. <laughs> so um, that would definitely be something, yeah. Yeah. Well, I hope you do come back. Thank you. I hope I know you too. go. I know that. Yeah. But I, th I hope you do come back because I think mm -hmm. uh, you'd be a great addition to our business community and maybe yes, you can bring the World Bank Group here somehow. Maybe I could. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Sitara. Thank you. I really Sitara appreciate Johnson it. Kid. Thank, Thank you so you much so for appearing on our show. Thank you. Aloha.